It's so weird. I don't even remember how this works. Like I've lost all my social skills. The rule number one of a lawyer, don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. That, that's true, actually, <laughs> at least in court. Hello, wonderful people. Irina Hiva here from a beautiful beach location in Dubai. And I'm here with a friend of mine, Gordon. Hi, Gordon. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. For uh, those who don't know you, can you please very briefly introduce yourself? Um, give us your origin story, as you call it. And very briefly, let us know how did you get into crypto and blockchain industry? Thank you. Thank you, Rina, for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, so, hi, everyone. I'm Gordon Einstein. And I guess I wear two and a half hats, but I'll just cover two of them. I am the founder of Crypto Law Partners, which is a law firm that explodes focuses exclusively on crypto and blockchain. I've also recently been appointed as International General Counsel of the Emerging Technology Association in Zug, Switzerland. And that's a nonprofit, actually the first nonprofit association approved by Switzerland that's related to crypto and decentralization. So I'm pretty happy and proud about that. Uh, my Wolverine style origin story is that in 2014, for com reasons completely unrelated to crypto, uh, I met the founders of Distributed Lab from Ukraine. I ended up going to Ukraine right in the middle of the war, which is very interesting, and met all these people who were involved in crypto and blockchain. And after a few exposures to them, I finally got the, the bug, so to speak. And the foundation of my interest is, yes, of course, I realized that these ventures, these blockchain and crypto ventures needed law, but my deeper realization was that law needed what blockchain and Bitcoin and crypto could bring to it. In other words, law could be reformed through these tools. So my mission since 2015-16, when I finally got the bug, is just to remake law in the, in the face or with the influence of blockchain and crypto, because I think there's a lot of good that can be done for humanity. And you know what, I'll even, I'll even break the fourth wall one minute because Emon's here. So this is the reason to be in Dubai. Our good buddy. No, no, it's okay. So I want I want to throw out there everyone we're that doing, um, I, I am a doing firm supporter. Well. Yes, I'm a firm supporter of the AIBC slash Sigma. I don't know if I can say Sigma, but I'm a firm supporter. I can't. I'm a firm supporter of this conference. I've had the pleasure of, of attending it the past few years. Everyone's been very gracious. As... How much are you paying him to say all of this? It's you pay him in low. Actually, yeah, I have to say this is the first time that. Payment has not traded hands, and yet I'm still saying this. So I must actually mean it. It's a good sign. Thank you. It's a, it's a good sign. That. So, Arena, to answer your question, and talk to you soon, uh, to, to answer your, your question is, you know, I went through a lot of personal changes in 2020, and I had a lot of good friends who said, Gordon, come to Dubai, see it. You'll kind of reinvigorate your life. You'll kind of see new things. And now this is my third time here, and this is a crypto entrepreneurial, non-quarantined, hotspot of entrepreneurial activity that I just need to be here. I'm not staying in my home apartment anymore. I'm not, not working out anymore. It's like, it's got, a, it's a comfortable place to live. There's a gym, there's smart people, there's you, there's things to do. So I'm here. Very good. Well, we're very happy to have you here. And yes, Dubai's crypto community is small, but very innovative, very entrepreneurial. Um, and well, very let active. me learn this. It may be small here, but it seems like everyone who's involved in crypto is coming here because this is probably the only place they can come to. Absolutely. So it seems to be growing by the moment. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So there are a lot of things happening in crypto space mm -hmm. nonstop. Uh, a lot of innovation is coming out. Uh, last year, DeFi was super hot. This year, NFTs are super hot. What are you personally excited about? Is it DeFi? Is it NFTs? Or is it DAOs? What are you, what are you super excited about? I am excited about anything that moves the ball forward. So obviously NFTs, though I think they need to get out of this sort of art ghetto and get more generally applicable, but that's coming. Uh, I'm excited about decentralized finance, of course, but my, my baby, my baby is DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. And I'm saying this as a corporate attorney, like literally corporate, as in I am a, a, I am a student and a historian and aficionado of the corporate form and its evolution over time. And I see DAOs as the apotheosis, if you like, of what corporations were meant to be when originally created. And the sort of warped version we have now is going to get rectified in, in the 2020 by DAOs. So this is where the action's at, and I'm happy to be at the front of it. 
That, that's fantastic. With so, good crypto attorneys such as yourself. So what's what's happening in the DAO space? Uh, what uh, you can absolutely talk about ETA uh, if if you want to. What is what what should people get excited about DAOs? Why do people care? Why should they care? So they should get they should care for the exact same reason that drove me back into law. Now just to, just to understand what this means, I had stopped practicing law and actually went back into law. This is like someone escaping from prison and then checking themselves back into their cell because they missed the food. Okay, that, that's how rare and unusual it is for a lawyer to leave law and then go back into law voluntarily. And like, like I said, I saw a chance for law to become better through the application of certain principles. Now, let, let me make that real. It is, law is, I don't hate on law. I think law is fantastic. And I'm sort of a, like I mentioned, I'm sort of a historian of these ideas because I, I think they're amazing. But there's no doubt that sometimes law interferes with progress as opposed to facilitating it. What's a good example? Well, one is that every single country on the planet has its own version of company law. You have UK company law, maybe even English company law, your French company law, mm -hmm. you know, your Brazilian company law. There the are 50 plus free zones in the UAE and each free zone has its own company law. Which is insane. It's, it's it basically insane. the lawyer and accountant and consultant full employment act. Exactly. And I'll even throw this out there, United States, there's no such thing as United States corporation. Or maybe there is that, you know, maybe the federal government owns a few. But when you want to set up a company in the United States, you have to do it in a state. There's a California corporation. There's a New York LLC or limited liability company. There's a, you know, Puerto Rico LLP. It's different forms within each jurisdiction and 50 different jurisdictions plus Puerto Rico, Guam and everything else. That's crazy. That is a massive inefficiency mm. that is locked into our system mm -hmm. because of our history and because of because of federalism and it's keeping uh, lawyers employed it's it's keep is keeping uh, accountants employed and it's keeping uh, bureaucrats employed that's what i don't want this yes. is completely inefficient and we'll never get rid of it using reform because it's, the vested interests are just way too strong but DAOs, the idea of forming human organization on the blockchain not by government i mean literally just taking a step back to get a company to form a corporation, you need a license from the government. You need, you need to have articles granted. It's not mm -hmm. real, at least in the United States, until you get the Secretary of State putting their endorsement onto your articles. That's what gives you legal personality. That's what gives you limited liability. That's what gives you the ability to enter into contracts to sue and be sued. Mm -hmm. But that's ridiculous, right? It's, it's almost like fiat money. It's, you know, who gave these, who put these people in charge? So the idea of being able to do an end run around the system and move the ability to form human organizations or, or create human groups on the blockchain rather than with government permission is both massively efficient and potentially liberating. Like, I don't want to have to request the government for permission to engage in economic activity at scale, because that's basically what's now required. If you want to be yourself and go into business, you can as a sole proprietor. If you and I want to go into business, and be very dangerous about it, we can form a general partnership, no. right? But the moment we want to achieve scale to work in large groups and protect ourselves legally and enter into contracts as a group, you need government permission. Well, that's mm -hmm. actually a form of economic censorship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Plus being inefficient. So, I mean, I will not express this in the usual harsh language I do, but enough of that. I, I, I deny them their power. And so my mission is to bring DAOs into real life. Now, ironically enough, this, if done right, will require coordinating and lobbying and working with regulators. And if it was just one government on the planet, there's no way that would work. But thank God, there's so many different jurisdictions and they're all vying in a competitive international space to be the first and the best. And, you know, the Emirates is a great example. What you mentioned with all these different free zones and all the different Emirates and everything else, there's always locations or jurisdictions willing to try new things, especially in like a sandbox environment, but also maybe in a free zone type environment. And I think this is the direction we need to go. AIBC Summit is coming to Dubai in May and you're one of the key speakers. And um, you've, you spoke at the AIBC Summit from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. This is going to be your what, fourth, fifth year in the row. And why for those who are watching us now, why should they come? Why sh should they come to Dubai? Why should they come to Dubai in May specifically for AIBC Summit? Why should they come to Dubai? Because this is a place you can actually live your life, be outside, be in a restaurant, go to the gym, be on the beach, 
and talk to people in real life. Not just through a screen. You know, believe it or not, people actually exist. You can be at the same table and look at them. It's so weird. I don't even remember how this works. Like I've lost all my social skills. But now Arena, thankfully, is helping me get a little bit back on track. So I appreciate that. Um, and the weather's warm and it's nice. Okay, that's why so Dubai. That's, that's personal. Okay, so we cannot talk about weather because everybody else said weather. But business-wise. Business-wise. Why should people come here, visit, love it, and set up a business? So I am going to admit I'm new to this environment. I cannot, without reservation, recommend it, not because of anything negative, but just because I'm new. I think you're probably the person to talk to to get the straight scoop, given your 12 years here and your deep connections. I'll give you my impressions, yeah, which please. is people are surprisingly friendly, open, accommodating, non-critical. There's no, you know, we were here first mentality. I think everyone here is from somewhere else, except for very narrow slice the population and there's just an understanding that maybe people come people go but you try to find the good ones and you make things happen um this they're very flexible they're very open you know every one from the government i've spoken to has been more like what can we do for you which i you know believe me in the u.s they never go what can we do for you you know it's more like they won't tell you what to do and then you'll get in trouble for doing it uh which is you know welcome to the sec the and I, the reason to come here is, I mean, it's literally true. All, and I'll call them friends. You know, I, I could use colleagues, but that's a little cold. All my friends in crypto, friends I do business with and do well with, are coming to Dubai. And there, and I wasn't kidding. There's a huge benefit to sitting down in a circle, drinking coffee, and just chatting. You know, it's it sounds funny, but things happen. I mean, it's almost like at conferences. Yes, of course, you want to go see awesome speakers. But a lot of the action happens in the halls or in the after events because you need that social connection. You need that body language. You need to bad ideas back and forth without having a strict agenda. And then new things come out of that. I'm a big believer in allowing the universe to be spontaneous. But you have to give inputs to the universe so it has something to work with. And one of the great inputs is just being physically present with each other. I mean, Clubhouse is great. Zoom is great. I, you know, these are all fantastic I, I adaptions. Hate, I hate Zoom with a passion. Sorry, guys. Well, I was trying, I was trying to be hate, moderately positive. I hate Zoom with a passion. But, you know, there's nothing like this. This is fantastic. And, you know, you and I have brainstormed to come up with some great stuff just by hanging out. Absolutely. So, so um, is there a particular topic you'll be covering at the AIBC Summit in May? What Shall we warm up the audience up for something interesting? You've got any sure. exciting things coming up? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, <laughs> well, that's why I'm asking, yeah. right? So, if I didn't know, I wouldn't be asking. The so, rule number one of a lawyer, don't ask a question you don't know the answer that, to. That's true, actually, <laughs> at least in court. In depositions, you can ask everything. The, this is not a deposition, so we're clear. What it feels like. <laughs> Even though it's being recorded. It's okay, it's okay. Um, so, as I mentioned, I was just appointed as International General Counsel of the Emerging Technology Association. The ETA, the Emerging Technology Association, like, like I also mentioned, is the first association in Switzerland of Verein that got approved for tax exempt status that, and, and is related to crypto. It's a big deal. It is the legal arm of the developers DAO, the DevX DAO, which is a project that's spearheaded or initiated by Timothy Lewis, but in collaboration, I guess you could say, with Professor Wolf Kahl, who's a great guy, uh, Marco Anabali, Tim Messer, and a whole group of people. The function, the reason for this DAO is to provide grants to developers and teams so that those developers can develop more technologies and more platforms that further decentralization, that allow for this democratization of access. Everything that we do, the DevX DAO, every grant we issue results in an open source result that is good for the community or available to the community without payment. It's a revolutionary idea. It's been kind of done in micro versions with other foundations and other platforms. But those grants have usually been for the benefit of one particular platform. We're supporting decentralization generally. And I think it's common knowledge at this point, you know, Casper has made a very significant grant to the ETA slash DevX DAO. And we're going to be making grants of Casper to support this agenda. And I find that very broad minded of Casper to have done this. And once I saw that this was happening and there's a chance to really put these ideas, the DAOs and everything else into motion personally, it was fantastic, and I, I, it's the topic I love talking about. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting us know, and that's something we all can get excited about and because we'll he learn more about it uh, in May at the AIBC Summit in Dubai.
Thank you, Gordon. It's wonderful having you here with us. Thank and you. Uh, look forward to meeting you all in May. Likewise.